Hi, I'm Joe Taylor. I'm the preaching minister at the Fairview Heights Illinois Church of Christ, just right outside St. Louis. And I'm glad that you have joined us for Caruso Online. You have been studying about how to write and develop sermons. We're going to take a little different uh, twist today, and we're going to talk about delivery. It is important, the content of our sermons, the information is valuable. It's the Word of God that we're sharing with people. But it's not just about how what we say, but also how we say it that's important. If you look at the best speakers, preachers that you watch give sermons, one of the reasons they're effective is because their delivery is really effective also. And so it's important that we develop a few skills that will help our delivery be good with our audience and make our sermons more effective. The first thing I'd like us to talk about is eye contact. It's really important that you have good eye contact with your audience. Eye contact allows you to build a relationship with your audience. It also allows you to build trust with them. We trust the people that look us in the eye when we talk to them. And so eye contact is important. It's also important because eye contact allows me to read my audience, to see if they're getting what I'm telling them, if they understand, or if they're confused, or if they're angry, or if they're happy, or whatever feedback I can get from them is valuable. And so I have to have eye contact. So you have to learn to be able to deliver your sermon and look at your audience as part of that process. A couple of things I would suggest is to make sure that you take time to look around. When you first get up here, make contact with your audience and look at them and establish eye contact right off the bat. The second thing I would recommend is that you don't speak from a transcript, but that you have an outline. So what I recommend is that you take your sermon and you write it out in a manuscript. And you take that manuscript and then you transfer it to an outline with a few words. The danger of a manuscript is that I tend to just read my sermon to my audience. And so then it begins to just take my eye contact away from them. But if all I have is an outline with a few words, then I will look at my audience. Now think of it this way. I am preparing a lesson that I will give to this group of people. By the time you have done your sermon, you are preaching to yourself also. So I have already preached this lesson to me before I give it to my audience. And then, if I want my audience to know and walk out of this room with my sermon, then I need to know it well enough that I know it without even looking at a piece of paper. So make sure that you have internalized your sermon it has become part of you. You should know well enough that you know what your main points are and what your main topic is, the point you want to get across to your audience, and you give that to them. If you are going to use a manuscript, I would recommend that you take a highlighter and you highlight key words in that manuscript so you don't have to read it word for word, but you can quickly find those key words. That might be another option for you. I do highly recommend write your sermon out as a manuscript, then transfer it over, though, if you're going to use the outline method. A couple of other things that are important is you need some gestures. If you're going to have gestures, make sure your hands are up and above the waist, up about mid-chest mid level. Also, make sure you stand up straight. If you're going to stand behind the, the podium, make sure that you stand behind it straight. Don't lean on it. Don't turn it into a dance partner where you're moving around. Try and hold down your movement. Don't walk and pace during your sermon. Those are all going to be distracting. You don't have to stand behind a podium, but you need to have good posture and you need to look at your audience and not have movement that's going to distract from what you're trying to do. Another really important thing in your sermon is your voice. So when you write a, an essay or a sermon, you have punctuation, periods and hyphens and commas and exclamation points. Your voice is the punctuation for your sermon. Your voice is the punctuation in an oral setting. 
And so you have to have voice changes. If you are monotone and your voice never changes, if the rate doesn't change, if the volume doesn't change, you'll lose your audience and put them to sleep. So it's really important, the three things I would recommend in how you use your voice. One is make sure you get those volume changes. Sometimes you can be real soft, sometimes you can be really loud, you'll have kind of a mid-range that you speak most of the time, but you've got to vary it, the volume. The second thing is the rate. So you need to at times speed up your rate, talk fast. When you get excited, you're gonna talk faster. Sometimes you wanna slow down to emphasize a point, but make sure your rate changes also. And don't forget to throw in a pause now and then. Pauses are a great way to emphasize a point, to set it off so that it's easily recognizable. One of the struggles we have in speech or giving sermons is that we tend to be afraid of silence. And so we fill our pauses with ums and things like that. Avoid that. Just have a pause that sets off the points you want to make. So pauses are good. Learn to use them effectively. So those are some important components that we need in our sermons. Good facial expression is also important. Let your audience see how you feel in your sermon. And make sure that your facial expression matches what you're talking about. So if you're talking about heaven, don't look uh, sad and upset because this is an exciting thing heaven is and we look forward to it. We should be happy and excited about heaven. And if you're talking about hell, certainly don't look excited and happy about hell. You want to look sad. And so make sure your facial expressions do match what you're talking about. When I think of the Apostle Paul writing his letters, I think when he talked about heaven and Jesus and the positive things that the churches he wrote to uh, were doing, he was happy and he was smiling. And I think when he had those sections of his letter where he was dealing with problems, where he was chastising them for things they were doing that were sinful, that he wrote those with a tear in his eye. And so I think we need to remember that our sermons, our facial expression shows our emotion as we present our sermons to the audience. So make sure that you have good facial expression, your voice changes, you have eye contact with your audience as you present this. It's really important to have good delivery. It's really important that you connect with your audience. It's not just what you say that's important, but also how you say it that's important. As I think about Jesus, there was something special about Jesus. He would get up and read and make comments in the synagogues, and people would say that he spoke as one who had authority. There was something not just about what he said, but how he said it. When I look at Jesus and I think about what it must have been to sit there and watch him give a parable, he knew just how to give the punchline or ask the right question with emphasis to get their attention. So we need to make sure that we have good delivery. Delivery skills can be practiced. You have to practice your sermon. So as you get ready for that sermon, make sure that you prepare well, organize that sermon, and Practice your sermon before you get up and preach and put into practice those delivery aspects that will make your sermon effective and will help you communicate God's truth to the audience that you're speaking to. I hope that you find these useful, that you'll put them into practice, and that God will use you in great ways as you share his message with the people that he allows you to speak to. Thank you.